uh, this edition is the fifth edition of Bash Skill Master Series, and we are basically looking at neck necklines. And this series is to take you from um, the drafting process all the way to uh, manipulating the measurements. And of course, we shall also look at the factors that influence the choice of necklines. And we shall also uh, look at the various variations of necklines and how they apply to different garments. The introduction. Uh, this is to look at the several factors that influence the choice of neckline, the type of garment, the occasion, the fashion trends, the client specification. The type of garment, of course, both men and women's garments have can have a wide variation of necklines. Uh, for instance, ladies' garments especially have a lot of uh, variations of, of uh, necklines. Uh, these can range from round necklines uh, to V necklines to, uh, to a whole range of necklines. And men's garments, uh, like you've seen t-shirts, they have round necklines. Then the occasion. A client may need to wear their garment on a particular occasion and may be akin to certain specific conditions. And they may need, you've seen, you've watched uh, most celebrities as they're going on this red carpet. Uh, you've seen that they have uh, this trendy fashion and uh, uh, some garments can have deep V necklines. So occasions pretty much can influence the type of neckline to put on a garment. Then the fashion trends. Unlike in Uganda, where we don't have a wide variety of trends, in other countries like Europe, they have these uh, <coughs> trends which are best off of uh, uh, the seasons, uh, like fall and uh, winter, like that. And these trends can pretty much determine the type of neckline you want to put on a garment. Then the client specifications. Uh, this is when you sit down with your client and you do what we call product therapy and the client informs you what uh, needs, what uh, specification go onto the garment uh, uh, they wish to, to, to be made. So these are the key factors that pretty much determine the type of neckline you're going to put on a garment. Like I mentioned, the type of neck, uh, the, the whole process begins with design. This is when you pretty much sketch and try to sort of like do some kind of uh, modeling, and, you know, uh, some kind of sketch work to see how suitable um, a neckline can be on a particular garment. Then after that, you would find yourself creating a tech pack, like you studied with Nina in one of those previous sessions in product development and fashion, uh, how to develop a tech pack. The information that you put into a tech pack pretty much defines where to begin when you are making your patterns. You actually get that information and you utilize it to start making a pattern. You don't simply just begin making a pattern from the air. You have to always have this tech part. And you always have to make sure that you keep a file or a folder of this tech box so that you can always reference. So continuing, a basic neckline. Let's consider a round neckline, uh, which is the most common type of neckline. This can be found in several types of garments, uh, like t-shirts, 
blouses, dresses, etc. As you can see in that picture, the lady is wearing a shirt with a round neckline. How do we draft this round neckline? Like I've mentioned, you always have to have your tech bar, or you always have to have these specifications ready, like measurements. Now, in this case, we're going to consider the following measurements. The cross back. The cross back is the behind part of the body. You know how we, we, we used to take a lot of uh, of measurements of motive. The cross back is 15 inches and the neckline depth is 3 inches and the neckline width is 3 inches. Now these measurements are not limited to this example. You can have uh, a neckline depth which is deeper than 3 inches and you can have a neckline width which is wider than 3 inches as we shall see how to manipulate uh, different styles of necklines. Now, of course, of course, this is our example. Now, these are the key measurements you need to draft this neckline. But in a typical work scenario, you would have all the measurements you need to, you know, to draft a complete garment. But we're not looking at all those other measurements. We're just focusing on these few measurements, uh, which will help us to draft this neckline. Now, going on, we take this 15 inches and we divide it by 2. Therefore, we'll have 7.5 inches. Now, most of you are going to ask me, why are we dividing this 15 inches by 2? Uh, obviously, because we are working on we are working on a quarter uh, sort of like a folded uh, a folded segment of the entire garment, then we simply need to take half of that cross back, which is seven point five inches. The rest of the other measurements, like the neckline depth and the neckline width, remain the same. Now when we go on, we're going to draw a full length line, about 10 inches. Now of course this line is not limited. This is just, uh, it's not limited to this example. Uh, this is just uh, a simple uh, scenario. But in a typical, uh, in a typical, in a typical project where you have all the measurements for the entire gamut, you will find that this line uh, flows and you have to sort of like draw it all the way to the waistline or all the way to the full length of the entire gamut. So in this case we're just using an example which is 10 inches. So you draw that vertical line, uh, you place your ruler and these are inches. You can work in any other units but for this particular series we are mostly considering inches. When you look at your tape measure or your ruler Inches are the widest measurements. So having drawn that vertical line, you take your ruler and draw a horizontal line AB, which is 7.5 inches long. 7.5 is the same as 7.5 inches, in other words. So from A to B is 7.5 inches. So you draw this horizontal line. And this horizontal line is supposed to be at 90 degrees with this vertical line, such that there is no case in point where this line AB is slanted. Now, having accomplished that, you go on to mark point C, this point right here, which is 3 inches. From A. Now remember, this is the neckline width. Now your neckline width, of course, if you this is on fold, but of course it would be about six inches, you know, for a whole complete gamut, like for the whole front part of that gamut. 
could be about 16 inches. But because you're working on half of that garment, of half of the front part, then we only considered uh, three inches, which is from point C up to point E. Having done that, we continue, we take, oops. Having done that, we're going to take, uh, I missed a slide there. We're going to take our ruler again, our vertical ruler, and mark point D. This point D is also three inches from A. After doing that, then you take this device, uh, this measuring tool, let me call it a measuring tool, not a device. So you take it and you basically join or connect point C to point D uh, with a curve like that, such that your outcome would pretty much look like that. And this neckline would be complete. This neckline would be complete. It's a very simple process. How many steps? One, two, three, four, five. In five steps, you will have accomplished drafting this round neckline. Now, of course, if it was a full garment, if you if you're to undertake the whole complete project to draft the entire garment, then you would continue, you know, definitely, you know, to slant the shoulder, uh, to demarcate the waist, etc., like that. But in this case, we are only looking at the neckline, and at that point, you would have finished drafting your neckline. Now, let us look at how to draft a square neckline. As you can see, that picture, the lady is wearing a dress with a square neckline like that. Now, in this case, it's very simple. I believe now you can pretty much see the pattern here. You simply follow the previous steps, all the previous steps, apart from the step of carving the neckline. So in this case, we simply connect C and D with line at right angles. In the previous round neckline, we simply connected C and D with a curve using a French curve. But in this case, for a square neckline, we're simply connecting C and D with these two lines. And these two lines, this line and that line, they're at right angles. And at that point, you will have finished drafting your square neckline. Now, this tutorial is meant to be short so that and straightforward so that you understand these concepts to the point. Now, how about if you wanted to draft extend, an extended U neckline or extended U neckline? As you can see in this diary, uh, in this picture here. Um, you can see this neckline is a little bit wider, a little bit wider, and it stretches uh, farther than the original round neckline. So how do you make this extended U neckline? Now, the extended U neckline can be extended both horizontally and vertically. In this case, we will simply take our point C and vary it. Remember, this is our original round neckline. It was passing right there. So in this case, we're simply going to extend it to the desired measurement. For instance, this originally was three inches, but we may wish to extend it about, let me say, four inches or five inches or six inches. Then I simply take C and I push it uh, further, you know, like that. Then my U neckline will become wider. I can even take it farther to this point. Let me call it probably five inches. Then it even becomes much more wider, like that. I can do the same for D. I can take it deeper to that point, and deeper to that point. 
So that's how you actually draft uh, an extended U neckline. Now, when I continue, there are other types of necklines. Necklines are not just limited to extended U neckline, to V neckline, to uh, square necklines, to round neckline. There are other variations of necklines, as you can see right here. Uh, there is a boat neckline, which is pretty much like an extended U neckline. There is a common neckline, which is an off shoulder neckline. Uh, then you have a deep V neckline. Uh, you have an edge neckline. Uh, this is more like an asymmetrical neckline. And you have a halter neck neckline, which is a bit colored, but sort of like polo. Then you have an illusion neckline. Uh, and this jewel neckline, a keyhole neckline, it has sort of like keyhole right there. And you have a polo neckline, a portrait, a scoop, a square, uh, a supplies, a sweetheart, and a v neck line. Now, these are all the variations of necklines. And I would, now, I'm not here to sort of like spoon feed every tiny single bit of detail when it comes to necklines. In design, we just go wild with our imagination. There isn't one specific. Um, uh, one, one specific method for doing a thing, you know, you can always experiment. So in this case, I task you to go and experiment as much as you can on how to come about with different, and of course, even these examples that I put right here, then this, this is not the, this is not where the list end. You can go as crazy as you can uh, when you're you know, designing this neckline. I task you to go and try as much as you can. Now, I would wish that when you're doing your assignment, you um, first take a piece of paper and a pencil and start sketching. Sketch, let your imagination go wild with what uh, design you envision. And then afterwards, try to plan on how you're going to actually come about with that neckline. But all these necklines follow the same similar principles as we have learned in those few slides back. It's not going to be any different. You need to know uh, the size of the crossbar and divide it by two. You need to know, sometimes may not even divide it by two, depending on like, oh, a symmetrical neckline, but you need it. You need the neckline dip, depth how deep is that neckline? And you also need the neckline width. How wide is that neckline? Those are the most prevalent measurements for drafting these necklines. So I task you to go back, take your pencil, uh, your paper, and start drafting. Start experimenting and drawing, getting your imaginations wild. Then I would love to see what your sub your submissions look like. You can simply take a screenshot, two screenshots, one screenshot for your sketches, or a couple of couple of screenshots for your sketches, and probably one or two screenshots for your um, draft. You know, and then that's what necklines are all about. In the near future, when we start now going into details on how to draft and come up with a dress or a shirt. We'll use these basic elements you've learned today of coming up with this neckline. It's very important that these concepts actually sync and you have to practice them so that when you move on to future uh, steps of making dresses and shirts, you wouldn't struggle a lot to determine how to come up with a neckline and uh, how to alter the various variations depending to your needs or specifications. Now, I would like to switch back to you, and um, I would like to switch back to you to uh, ask me any questions you may have. Then we complete. This lecture was uh, 
a very a very short webinar uh, but of course when we come to making entire garments we will certainly have a little bit of longer webinars you know but for this particular webinar it's very short and precise and of course uh, shorter segments are very key because um, uh, they don't keep you uh, bored uh, you you are more engaged and more uh, energized to go and try out so let me now open the floor for you to ask a couple of questions i'll take about four questions and we close all right Yes, please. Any questions in the chat? Are there any questions in the chat? Let me check. Um, uh, Nakavada Curry is saying, I don't see how to come up with this keyhole neckline. I don't see, yes. Uh, keyhole neckline, uh, mm -hmm. for some of you who may not uh, see what What she's saying, uh, when you look at this key, keyhole neckline, it seems to be a little bit complicated for her. Uh, now, of course, like I mentioned, um, it's not gram work, it's trying and experimenting. I would love to see what you come up with first, and to also first practice is uh, in your. Uh, these initial basic necklines I've just uh, shared with you. And if possible, to go an extra mile and try out something of your own, then I will have an appointment and an interaction with you one on one, and we'll go through those steps and those processes together so that I can help you uh, to, to, to uh, draft this one. But I would love to first see you drafting the original basic neckline. And also to try out, you can still try out this keyhole or any of these necklines or any of your imaginations. And then when we meet next one on one, we can I'll create a form where we'll have an appointment. We can meet one on one, and I can help you to have a systematic approach to actually uh, drafting uh, or improving your design. And <clears throat> Dorin uh, uh, Naboke is saying, may you please help with the polar neck? Yeah, this is the, still the same thing. The polar neck is uh, uh, sort of like a collared neck. And after you've drafted uh, the first segments, which I've told today, the basic neck one, then I will definitely prepare uh, a few slides and share them with you on how to develop some of this each of this you know but i want to first see how you sort of like come about uh you know uh, 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 by yourselves you know then what factors determine the neckline design uh, like i mentioned uh the factors that determine the neckline design to i mentioned them already and uh i mentioned them already at the beginning this range from the type of garment range from the type of garment, the occasion, to the fashion trend, to the client specifications. Uh, when you sit down with your client, they will always mention to you that they need uh, a certain particular design. This, they could tell you, I need a round neckline, I need a thin neckline, I need uh, like that, you know, and you're able to record these specifications. And, They'll help you a lot to determine 
uh, the, the style, the whole design. Yeah, I'll take one more question and then we close. Uh, one more question. I can see there is a uh, Kasabiti Kathari. Kathari, do you have any questions, please? Kathari? Oh. Uh, Nora, Nora, do you have any questions for me today? If there are no questions, I'll assume that you guys have understood everything. No, sir. I've got what you're telling us. We need to first try out and then we'll add to you. Okay, yeah. You the questions I had were like, uh, what exactly? What? what? Hmm. Okay, you are. Yeah, let's first try out and then we'll ask you after when we've tried out what we are supposed to do. Fantastic. And you can always come to my inbox with as many questions as you can. And when you go to the, when you log into your classrooms, I think, yeah. When you log into your classrooms, you can still comment. And I'll still take those comments and answer them. Yes. Yeah. Um, Nakabanda Kari, do you have any questions for me? Nakabanda Kari doesn't have any questions. Oh. Uh, the fact that we have exhausted what we are meant to cover today, allow me to uh, end this webinar. If you have any questions, you can log into your Google Classroom and comment on this topic. I am going to upload this video as well. And this, these slides are already available uh, in your classroom. So you can comment there and we will be able to take those questions and ask them. Because uh, we cannot have all day on the platform. So allow me to close and uh, we can uh, meet uh, next week. And I would love to see what you come up with. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being here for this couple of minutes. Uh, see.